Hi, I'm Michael Shu. Hi, I'm Colin Pregent. And whoops, I think I just shit a brick. Congrats. It's a bag. <gasps> In their secret base at EVS, Michael and Colin are the Brick Masters. Here to unleash the industry's top bricks in a bloody battle royale. Top brands fight to the death across four episodes of Lithium Ionic Carnage. Go, go, go. It's freaking cold in here. Oh, oh, shit. We've got damage. In the big brick battery Fuckity. battle bonanza. And we're back at the EVS studios in Burbank to continue the B5 violence. We've tested them in a controlled environment in our first episode, baked them to death in the second episode. What will we do with them next? Well, we're gonna take your dad, and we're gonna over, and we're gonna No. We're going to freeze them. Cool. So he couldn't afford flying to Antarctica, so we found our location in an unlikely place, at the Daily Blossom Florist in Alhambra. Surprisingly, their floral refrigerator can go as low as 20 degrees Fahrenheit. We set up our charging and depletion stations to acclimate to the cold. You know, when I started this, I had hot coffee. Now I have iced coffee. I'm gonna put that joke on ice. Oh! As a bonus, we'll see if the sponsored Black Magic Ursas and Canon 35mm Primes survive the freezing temperatures. But hold up! Let's cover some science. All the batteries except for the wussy pag link are rated to be able to operate in as low as negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures. The walk-in freezer can't go that low, so our target will be 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the freezing point of water. While not quite the temperature of the set of March of the Penguins, it should still give a good idea of which brick will keep you warm this holiday season. After an hour, the freezer hit 32 degrees Fahrenheit and it was time to get our winter wardrobe on and bust the bricks out. To make sure the batteries were properly stressed, they were pre-chilled in a freezer overnight to 20 degrees Fahrenheit and transported with dry ice to location. Wow, you can see the frost on them. That's crazy. Colin got performance anxiety in the cold. Oh, oh yeah, oh. Spoiled by Los Angeles weather, we could barely make it through and Colin's body started to let it go. Don't die, Elsa! Wait, it's the end of The Shining. Is it? We're just gonna start these cameras rolling. We're gonna actually check on like the clip itself to see how long it actually lasted before dying. And right when it powers on and you can record, hit record. Oh my God! Blue shape didn't even start, what? Before the tests even started, the team ran into its first problem. Okay, it's, it's on, it's on. It's on. Oh, oh, we checked all the other camera battery combos to make sure that it wasn't the Ursas that were failing. We also switched the blue shape to other cameras. And we'll fire up the blue shape. Oh, shit. Showing full charge. Yeah, what the hell is happening? That battery works about as well as you do in the cold, Mike. Okay, um, blue shape is dead. Moving on, we start the charging test and let the time lapse roll. Two, one, go. And there they go, everything's turning on. We wanted to give Blue Shape one more chance. It's like blowing a Nintendo cartridge. I decided to try more aggressive tactics. Spank, work, bad boy. Come on, bad boy. Oh, Michael. Turn on. Bad Blue Shape, bad. Calm down. It's okay. Calm, I'm calm. Don't take it personally, Mike. After I consulted a therapist, we returned to find a surprise at the charging station. The Anton Bauer is actually not even charging. It's at 1% still. It says it's on hold, I guess to prevent any damage from trying to charge it at this temperature. And uh, Blue Shape is actually not charging either. Obviously, if I was working in cold conditions, I'd want a battery to be charging right now. Yeah, who knows? And, and on one hand, you want to be running in order to get the shot. Right. But, you know, you don't want to destroy your battery to not be used later in the production. Before we even knew it, all the Ursas shut down. So they're all dead. They kind of almost died all at the same time. We check the run times on the video clips and get our numbers. Minutes. IDX, one hour and 20 minutes. One hour and 19 minutes. Fast forward, one hour and 20 minutes. What? They're all within a minute of each other or two. Surprisingly very, very close. But we're gonna have to take a look at the charts to see how much they reduced in runtime, right? From normal temperatures. Exactly, exactly. So let's, let's show the chart. 
Boom. Hmm. While Anton Bauer shriveled up the most, this simply made all the surviving competitors tied in runtime. So Blue Shape simply failed the runtime test at freezing temperatures while everybody else's runtime became the same. Plus, Anton Bauer and Blue Shape's chargers won't allow charging at that temperature, while IDX and Paglink plowed forward. Just a few minutes after my great-grandson was born, the final charging numbers of IDX and Paglink came in. While the Paglink took a whole 35 minutes longer to charge, IDX had absolutely no time change between the control and the cold test. What the f I think we pushed them a bit too hard in the charging test, yeah? I'm sure some viewers will want a gentler rematch. I'm glad you asked, because I tweaked the test conditions back at home and redid the test. Check it out. <gasps> I did the follow-up test right at home with a GoPro attached to my head because I don't have any friends. After calling up both Anton Bauer and Blue Shade, they tell me that Anton Bauer's digital series minimum charging temperature is 41 degrees Fahrenheit, and Blue Shape allows slow charging between 32 and 53 degrees Fahrenheit. So our new target test temperature is chosen as 41 degrees Fahrenheit. I cycled the batteries using the Ursa, zip locked them up nice and tidy, and threw them into the freezer at 0 degrees Fahrenheit overnight. In this new test, we're going to simulate the scenario of shooting in freezing conditions, and then coming back to home base to charge, where the batteries will thaw over time. The next morning, I gradually defrosted the bricks in the refrigerator to avoid condensation short out as we made our way to 41 degrees. Once out of the refrigerator and onto my dinner table, there was still a decent amount of waiting for the bricks to be warm enough to start charging, with a few false starts waiting for the blue shape to get out of her trailer. But eventually, we got started. As the afternoon passed by, it was clear from the charging speed that the bricks are no longer having shriveled performance anxiety. <coughs> The stragglers finish, and we have our numbers. Go, go, gadget, chart! The difference in charge time is negligible, but one thing is for certain. IDX is like a terminator in the cold charge tests. But who's the overall winner of the cold tests? IDX and Pagling seem to be tied for first place to be the least affected by the cold, with Anton Bauer in second place, and Blue Shade being last just because it got disqualified in the runtime test. Well, that was a pretty cool test. The next episode of the Big Brick Battery Battle Bonanza will be the final one for obvious reasons. We will be dropping, flinging, and smashing these batteries to see which one survives the durability obstacle course in the EVS Studio parking lot. It will be smashing! Colin, what? What do we want viewers to do right now to know when the episode comes out? Click subscribe. You're a genius! Now do it, people! Special thanks to The Daily Blossom for helping us freeze our bricks off and to EVS and Burbank for letting us film here in their studio. Check out their links in the description and we'll see you kids soon. What was that? Oh, that was just a bunny ears. I thought you were gonna take your creepy hands and creep all over me. God. I'd click that. The zipper's down. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> was it? Bad, bad, ow. Ugh. Bad boy. Let me try this. Bad. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, let me try this again. <laughs> this is a different kind of video. <laughs>